Hello, today I have the third and final video in the series on the Inu power banks. Today we'll be unfocused since I'm presenting two power banks, the 20,000 milliamp and the 25,000 milliamp hour offering. I decided to finish out the series with two power banks. These are very different devices, so I will quickly go through each for its capabilities and functions. Then the comparison charts will compare all the Inus to see how each performs for usable capacity, cost, and density. The video is really not technical at all at this point, but Still, if you don't get it, it's a battery in a box. I will compare rated values to measured values to see if they align. Hopefully, I will find out if one of these Inu power banks really is a great buy. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon and others down in the description. Thanks to patrons and channel supporters. Next up in the Inu series is the 20,000 mAh PD22.5BI-B5 power bank. This is the larger size power bank with enough capacity to charge some larger devices, but we will see if the PD is really up to the task or if it's really a big battery and not much else. The power bank has a digital display showing the battery percentage and I found this to line up very closely with the actual charge and discharge performance. The power bank has one thing I don't like, the coating is that rubber coating that turns to sticky goo in like 5 years. Unfortunately, this is common across all of these. It has two USB-A ports and one USB-C port. The USB-C port can be used for charging and discharging. The operation of this power bank was simple. It has a button. The button will wake up the power bank as well as turn on the flashlight feature built into the power bank. This is a multi-mode power bank, but it is very limited in its modes of operation. It will fast charge an Apple phone, but it may not be able to do that with a Samsung phone. The biggest downfall of this device, big battery, but slow power transfer. The power bank did have the pass-through capability, so if you need to top off while charging your device, you can do that. This turns into a USB-A only device when in this condition. Also, the device is not an uninterruptible power supply, so if the power goes out, the power goes out. This power bank will get your small devices moving, so phones, cameras, watches. It is a good choice for low powered and slower charging devices, as it doesn't have the ability to charge a laptop that needs 20 volts. The power bank did stay on for the full discharge cycle, though. The energy capacity was a little on the low side versus the rated size, and the charging is worse than the expected, leaving to quite a bit lower efficiency for a power bank of this size. This one again falls to 10 watt hours you put in, you get about six watt hours out, which is poor. In terms of charging speed, the power bank charged at the rated speed. That speed, unfortunately, is really slow. It took four hours to get to 80% charge and just over six hours to get to a full charge. It's slow enough, but it's also fairly inefficient. So it does generate some heat, but it's over a long time. The thermals on this power bank were as expected. With a large battery and lots of room in the case and a very low wattage output, the power bank stays nice and cool. In comparing with other power banks, the Inu series is very interesting. The 20K falls behind. It doesn't have what it takes to hang with the other high power rated competition, but when looking at it compared with the also low powered Anchor 325, it appears nearly in the same overall efficiency and has a little more power capability. Best and lucky last in the Inu series is the PD 65 watt 25,000 milliamp hour power bank with model BI B63. This is the largest power bank I will be looking at with enough capacity to charge larger devices. At 65 watts of power delivery, we will be looking out for the thermals getting out of hand, like we have seen from some others. Many of the features of this power bank are the same as others in the series, except no flashlight. Same sticky goo coating, but the portage does change. This one has two USB-C ports, finally, and one USB-A port. The ports are different and labeled for the functions they support. The power bank does have the flip-out phone holder. Please don't do this. This is just an extra water ingress point. The operation of this power bank was simple. It has a button. That button will make the power bank wake up. And that's about it. This is a multi-mode power bank and it very closely lines up with the 45 watt offering, but offers more current. This should be able to power and charge many business grade laptops while on the go. Not bad. The PPS is limited to three amps, so no super fast charging two, but fast charging at 25 watts, good enough if you ask me. The power bank did have the pass through capability. So if you need to top it off while it's charging your device, you can do that. With the two USB-C ports, this device can keep the other port active. In addition to that, it keeps the USB power delivery negotiation active, so it can hold higher voltages as an uninterruptible power supply also. That's a first, and it's a niche feature for this device. 
This power bank will get most of your devices up and moving, so phones, cameras, watches, tablets, and laptops are all on the table. This power bank has up to a 20 volt output mode with just over 3 amps of current too. The power bank did stay on for the full charge and discharge cycle. The energy capacity was on the higher side versus the rated size, and the charging was better than most, leading to better efficiency for a power bank of this size. So this one falls to 10 watt hours you put in, you get about 8 watt hours out. Not bad. Of course, by the time you charge your phone from this, you lose that in the device, the cable, etc. Power banks are not efficient in general. Let me know if you want a deep dive on efficiency. In terms of charging speed, the power bank charged at the rated speed. It was able to pull 45 watts during charging. It took about two and a half hours to get to a full charge. The charge did taper to a slower speed at about one hour and 53 minutes, which would get you to 90% charge mark. So great, actually. It stays near top speed charging until 90%. It doesn't try to charge it so fast that it overheats. The thermals on this power bank were very good. During both the charging and discharging test, this power bank was barely warm, nowhere near hot. This is a testament to that higher efficiency and larger battery and making good use of it. Keeping things cool also explains why this power bank can discharge fully at 65 watts with no interruption and charging was just as easy. The Inu 25K steps things up. This, in comparison with others, puts this as a top tier performer. The efficiency is near the top of the stack. Whether asking for 25 watts or 65 watts, this one can deliver, which is very nice. The others get a penalty for higher wattage claims. This one actually got a little more efficient. The power banks are easily within the 100 watt hour requirement for non-extra permitted air travel of power banks. The energy level of the 20 amp hour version is 73 watt hours and the 25 amp hour version is 93 watt hours, both under 100 watt hours. Watt hours determine if it can fly, not watts. Though, in this case, all the numbers are under 100. In terms of value, Inu really stacks these power banks based on the feature set, which is interesting since the little converters can't cost that much, but oh well, market sets the price. Of course, the 25K is the most expensive, but it is also the most feature rich. For power banks with lots of features, the value is still good, but you do pay for that. The 20K looks excellent in value. If you need to charge a phone on the go cheaply, it's the best in show, as long as you aren't paying for energy, but in general, people will consider this negligible. Onto the density chart. Another way to look at the data is the energy density. This looks okay. The 20K is very energy dense for what you get, meaning it can store a lot of energy in a smaller package or for less weight. You lose power density though, that means it's slow. So be ready to wait hours to charge. The 25K loses some energy density to gain additional features. This is often shown by the increase in power density on the same device. This pretty closely matches some other power banks, so really right in line with the other higher power offerings. The great thing is they both deliver this power and energy for full charges and discharges, no waiting for cooldown. Okay, well, there it is. A look at a range of Inu power banks from small and compact up to about as big as they get. The good thing with every one of these power banks is they all meet the claims they make. No lies or overstated specifications. They don't overheat and they deliver everything they say they can deliver. Some are not advanced, some are very capable. For the money, you can get a decent amount of power bank. The 10K and 20K are slow boat devices, watches and phones. The 15K and 25K are faster devices, laptops and more. It's all about not overstating the specifications though and Inu seems to be honest about the claims. I know that Inu just released some additional models of power banks with some higher wattages, so we'll see much later on if those also meet their claims. Or did they fall into the trap of more watts more better? Thanks for watching this short series on power banks. I've got some power adapters next. Goodbye.